Our first game is going to be Malia hosting Serdinola. The African side are looking to bounce back after a 1-0 loss in Segovia. Serdinola uh, are feeling very confident after that 3-0 victory, even though they traded blows. This game, however, started off quite hot and with some controversy too. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of passing play between Serdinola and Kata creates the opportunity and gets fouled in the box by Gonzalez. A penalty for the Barcelona side. And Garros saved by Salcedo. They're not and <laughs> hit the post. Unbelievable. It escapes them. It's still nil-nil. And five minutes later, the home side has their own opportunity after that missed penalty. Peroni is going to hit it to Gonpi, and it's going to be taken away by Miguel Garcia. And you're going to see him cross it in here in a run by Cano deflected onto the post. And it is said that truth is stranger than fiction. Believe it or not, after so many post strikes, we have another one. Danny Garcia taking it off the other side of the post. Incredible how this is still nil-nil at half. But the second half would not have to wait long. Long throw in, flicked on, and Gonzalez was able to get it before the goalkeeper. And the African side, Malia, find themselves up 1-0 against Serraniola, the table toppers from game week one. The home side continue to pump the ball into the box, trying to push that advantage here. Alberto Martin puts it forward, and Miguel Garcia gets fouled by Bruno. And sure enough, there's a penalty again in this game. Miguel Garcia dispatches it, putting the goalkeeper the other way. 2-0 for the home side. But the away side got a little bit of stroke of luck here. Duran pumps the ball forward and Kante clashes into Serrano. Kata, the star man, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And he can't put it in. Still 2-0. The home side will eventually get their third goal and Kano will get his first ever goal for Malia. You can see here, Serrano pumps it forward. It's flicked on by Garcia. And a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He won't miss a third time in this game. It's 3-0 to Malia. And Kano is finally on the board after missing twice. But the away team is not going to back down. Kato was able to get a second cross in. And Gallego was able to get the head on it, but just over the bar. It took 70 minutes for the wayside to finally score after a missed penalty and numerous opportunities. A long ball over the top, Kate able to run onto it, and the star man is able to round the keeper and get his goal. 3-1, we are not even close to being done with this game yet. And a minute and a half later, the Barcelona side were able to score again. Kata, being the center of the offensive talent here, is able to push it out to Duran, getting a cheeky slick cross in, and Gallego, the late run into the, the back post there. It's now 3-2, and the pressure is on. This game will end with a sixth goal in the 75th minute. Sergio Perez will create everything for himself, and this is how it's going to end. Malia will win 4-2, after a blasted shot right into the top corner there. The African side get their first three points of the season. Elsewhere, Estepona are hosting Coria as Nane gets his first start of the season. This header came close after tipping over the bar. The away side wanted to test Estepona in any way they can, particularly their backup goalkeeper. Brickma, the Ghanaian international, was injured and Luque moved to the left side and took a pot shot and went just over the bar and had the keeper freaking out. The team from the south of Spain is going to have their own chance here. Uh, a wonderful run by Pina. He's going to be running all the way down that far side just past his man. He's going to get a cross in. However, it's not the cross that's the, really the dangerous aspect of this play. It's going to be the fact that Rodega collects so many players. Domingo strikes the post. And it's unfortunate for the home side. 
The home team do get a goal before halftime, though. Valdetta and Domingo get this get this all set up with Amores. And they are able, between the three of them, able to switch around the defenders and get a cross in. And Calvo acrobatically puts it into the net. But straight off the kickoff, Correa coming right down the, uh, the pipe here. Sergio Gomez blasts one into the corner. So unlucky. However, Estepona in the second half are going to hit the same section of the crossbar. Pina cannot believe he didn't get a goal there. But with all this fancy play and all of the offense that's been happening, sometimes an easy long ball is just the way to break it down. Alex Rodriguez pumps it forward. Ledesma is too fast for the defender. He's going to cut it back. And he's going to let his co-worker dispatch it. Mercadal. Hits it so hard, the keeper is rooted to his spot, and it's 1-1. This game will end 1-1, and Correa will have another opportunity to get a goal here. But it won't be without another woodwork strike. Unbelievably, I cannot believe how many times this thing has not gone in. But it does like to touch the post. Traver off the crossbar and over. Also playing in this game week, Dio Casano in Cáceres are hosting Al Corazón. Now, what's interesting is that Dio Casano lost their first game and they felt as though they got overpowered by Atletico Madrid B team. Uh, in this game, they are going to be having majority of the possession and majority of the offense. And we'll see how that plays out for them with Al Corazón, who are tipped to have a struggle season. Uh, so it will be interesting because the coach of Al Carson not all is very talkative in the press. And against me, they said that we're the golden oldies and we're a bunch of old men. In this game, they said they believe that they're going to be better than Diego Cassano and Diego Cassano is going to get relegated. With the penalty 20 minutes in, Al Carson seems to have generated a little bit of luck for themselves. And Baladia is going to put it away for the away side. Here's a play here for the home side. Bernal is going to be able to win the ball back and carry it forward. And we're going to have uh, an interesting situation on our hands with Margallo going to take it down to the house, cross it in. And Bernal, just over, spoiled the chance at 30 minutes. Dio Cassano will be frustrated for the rest of the game. This is their last chance of the match. The game will end 1-0 with 74% of the possession. Bernal misses again with his head. Don Benito is at home against uh, Soqueyamos. And uh, the manager of Don Benito was making a few changes before the game. He did highlight Borja Domingo as one of the key players for his squad. However, in this game, he benched him and then started Revi for that starting striker role. Uh, interesting enough as well, Sokoyamos, the press is now getting on top of the manager about potentially being a relegation team. In this passage of play, Revi does break the line and scores for the home team within 13 minutes. This is going to start rough for Soquayamos, and it may continue on. However, sloppy play plagues Soquayamos. You can see here that at the start of their play, after retrieving possession, Godoy makes a sloppy pass to Herrera, and Espinar pumps it forward. Campare flicks it on. Revi with two goals within 20 minutes. The manager's change to get rid of Domingo and replace him by Revi is paying off dividends immediately. The away team had things go from bad to worse. Route one play. Keeper, flicked header, Campare in off the woodwork. It's 3-0, 21 minutes in, and uh, a mountain to climb at this point. Oddly enough, from the kickoff of that previous goal that you just saw, 
Sukuyamos, for some reason, are awakened after being demolished 3 nothing, And uh, string some passes together where Yimi is able to put a through ball to Ubis, and it cuts the line, and they get one back, and it's now 3-1. But this goal was short-lived. Adrian Perez scythes down Campare in an immediate straight red. And from here on out, Don Benito are released. Mateo Santana pulling the strings and moving the ball around. Trinidad pumps it forward. Campare, unlucky not to get a goal there. This is going to be an easy, slick move for Don Benito. And then a boneheaded error by the away side at the end. Trinidad is going to be able to get this ball in and it's going to be easily won by Campare for some reason. But then Martinez hacks him down for some reason in the box with no threat on goal. And Revy completes his hat trick within the first half. And it now sits 4-1 in the away side of the man down. Unbelievably, we're not even at half yet, but you can see how the mojo is flowing here. Revy, Campare on the other side of halftime. Sokoyamos have a little glimmer of hope, uh, but I believe it's mostly because Don Benito are just a little sleep at the wheel because they're so comfortably ahead in a man up. It's, uh, yeah, almost a, a little blemish here. You can see the Defender is not tracking back. Fernandito gets a cross in amongst three players. Ubis is able to get a head in on heel. At 60 minutes, I believe this goal is good for the culture. Mateo Santana, as I identified earlier, the Brazilian, he is a good player and should be respected. Ortiz is going to lay this off, and Santana can take the setup and just blast it at 18 yards. And in another rare circumstance where the away side has a, a decent play. Delgado takes a shot and heel is able to get a palm on it, but he does have to get stretched out for it. The away side just don't want, they just want the game to end. They're really just trying to come out with as minimal damage as possible and just pumping the ball and clearing it away. And the ball gets recycled and pumped right back into the box with this relentless pressure from the home team. You can see Delgado gets it out of Trinidad. And he's able to get that ball to Perez. Domingo, one, and the second chance. Domingo comes off the bench for the hat trick hero, and he gets one of his own at the 73rd. The home team manager at the end of this game said that the players get a day off after this, after such a sensational performance, and the away side manager stated that this was quite humbling. Even at the end of the game, this is the final highlight. Yimi is able to dribble around, and it's honestly because there's not much for trying. And he shoots it waywards. 6-1. Adarve and Leganes was a drab affair. There was not really much going on throughout most of the game. This is the 54th minute in the first highlight of the game, just to illustrate that to you. And again, another set play another header that was a near miss. Aratia just over the crossbar there for the away side. Both teams are affected by a potential relegation battle at the end of this. Adarve were fortunate to win last week, but Arauz is unfortunate to miss this. Set plays were the theme of the day. The only chance that came out of this was from a set play. Juan Ma pushed in the box at the 89th minute. And Adarve, the capital club, potentially have a way to win this against the Leganes B team. Juan Ma, who was fouled, scores for the home side. Three points, six from two. In this game, my Montijo team had two changes with Rayo and Toro on the right back in the striker position. I still had that pressing maneuver there, and as you can see, I was able to press them all the way back to the goalkeeper and create a chance from this. Rayo 
And Pozo were able to get a ball back. And from here on out, you can see that the offensive pressure above the halfway point really got to them. Cardozo able to put a ball in, and Rio. His touch failed him. Paso did have a chance from the set piece here. Uh, it was a nice clean header right off the post in the rain. When I was playing this, I thought I scored the goal of the season. A uh, free kick that was getting recycled back around. Cardozo uh, and it plays out to Madrigal and Baragan. Just helps the ball along, but however, he's off sides. So it remains nil nil into the second half. However, unfortunately, Atletico Paso were able to catch me off guard in some like lazy play. You see Guti just blasts it forward and Borjas Martin, one on one with the keeper. Slick finish into that corner. And those uh, canaries are absolutely going off in the Izzy Irish dances in the corner. So I made a couple changes here, and I was so close of taking Baragan off, but he created the game, created it, and Catala, eat your heart out. I subbed him on, and he scores within 10. Baragan, I nearly subbed him, but thank God I didn't. But again, a familiar theme, Montijo has a chance to win late. Batanero puts it over for Catala. One on one with the keeper, and it's over the bar. Stays 1 1. Vinavens lost their game last week at away, and Guada won their game at home. Now, this was a really, really poor performance. Vinavens had majority of the opportunities and the possession. Guada had almost nothing. But this was the first opportunity in the game, and actually was the first goal of the game, too. Sieto was able to get the cross the box, and Pajuelo blasts it from six yards out. Vienovens go up 1-0 in the first highlight of the match, 57 minutes into the game. This is only one of two highlights in the game. The goalkeeper flaps at it and Ojog hits the side netting. Game ends 1-0. El Madridleño come over to Cáceres to take on Caraceño. This game is uh, going to turn out to be very interesting as Casares are looking to shake off the 3-0 loss they took at the beginning of the year, but Atletico Madrid B are looking to build off their first week victory. Early goal for Danny G, and this is two minutes into the game. However, the home side had no reprieve from their errors. This one coming from the goalkeeper. As you can see here, Camus pumps it in and Moreno is unable to it as it clips off to the bar and it just rolls to the back of the net. 2-0 within 10 minutes. Casareños cannot seem to get the ball out of their net. One Moreno to another. It's 3-0 from a set play. And it's not even 20 minutes on the clock. 3-0 to the away side. The initial blows were quite devastating. However, simple ball play opens up the field for Casareño and Samu is able to put it away. It is 3-1, but there's nothing to celebrate with this goal. The home side was looking to reset themselves for the second half, try to rebalance the, the scales here. However, the Capital Club had other ideas. Moreno, from provider in the first half to score in the second half, scores it a great header on the back post. Five minutes of the second half. The game seemed well and truly over. Casareño never to come back. There was a small chance that there was going to get a goal out of this for the home side. Samu Manchon gets the ball robbed from him. However, he is going to intercept the shot and get a chance, but the goalkeeper was able to get in front of it and he was offsides. One thing is for certain, though, Casareño should be thinking about their aerial presence. Danny G getting a second one. This is the fourth header goal that was scored today by the Capital team. And this will be the last goal of the game. 5-1. If you've made it this far in the video, the best is for last. Naval Carnero against Segovia. 
Neither team is going to be able to defend for the entire length of this game, and nor do they want to. It'll be all offense. The Bulgarian Temenishkov opens it up in three minutes, and the home side take the lead. Ten minutes later, the home side will get another one. Ian is able to jump over four Segovian defenders for this one. 2-0, and again, just getting started. At 28 minutes, Kalar is able to throw the ball in. Esteban gets fouled in the box by Fernando Llorente. Tomenishkov picks up the ball immediately, and the Bulgarian blasts it. The second goal of the game, and it is now 3-0. Ball gets pushed out here. It's the 33rd minute. Gets recycled into the box. Tomenishkov is fighting with the defenders. Kalarj is going to put this ball back in. Rodriguez's help. Heal. Tomenishkov. Yep. First half hat trick for the Bulgarian. The danger man gets two in five minutes. Ball gets pushed up forward. And Arribas. And Unia wins it. It's now uh, Llorente. Producing this play, laying it off to Manu, and he's going to lay this off out to Acuna. He's able to get that cross on, and Arribas gets one back. It's 4-1 now, so it's the 35th minute. Now, just a few minutes later here, Adrian Perez is going to be working this all the way down the right side. Crossed in, and Arribas again. Third goal in two games. This goal, you'll never believe. 66 seconds after Arriba scores, Tomenishkov chips the keeper on the other end. It is now 5-2. 39 minutes into this game. But this pressure cooker of goals is not over. 50 seconds after Tomenishkov puts one in the net, it goes the other way. Acuna breaks the line and blasts it into the offside of the keeper. Valeto can't touch it. What is this game? It's 5-3. And we're finally on the other side of the halftime. It's now 60 minutes into the game. And Adrian Perez puts a ball in and Plummer just over the bar. Not troubling the keeper too bad, though. The sixth goal for Naval Carnero will be a FM Classic. This is going to be a free kick off the bar and the rebound put in by Rodriguez. The game seemed to just fizzled out a little bit as the home side was up three. Now, you would believe that, but this is not a normal game. Acuna is going to be able to cross a ball in here that is so deft. The back post run by Plummer. I mean, this game is going to end with both teams over two in XG. What's incredible is just the fact that Segoviano were able to come back and make the very end of this game tight and a little worrisome at 6-5. Astra is going to hit the crossbar here, and the substitute Barrao will finish it. But this does end 6-5 in a shootout. <sighs> and breathe. Game week two ends with 12 shots off the woodwork and 37 goals. Four games with six goals or more. It was a wild ride. Tomenishkov tops the goal scoring charts here with five. Revigit with his hat trick is now in second place. Denny Arribas three in two games. Atletico Madrid and Union Ardarve are the only teams with 100% records. There are three teams without a single point on the board. Dio Casano, Socoyamos, and Casareño. My Montijo team are both winless and unbeaten with two points on the bar board with their 1-1 draw apiece. After that being said, we'll be moving on to game week three where there will be two days of action. See you then.